Hi, hello everybody, my name is Brady and we are back with another React video and today we're going to be checking out more Salmonella. The video we have today is Animals in Space, A Brief History. That should be interesting. I think that my knowledge of animals in space is pretty elementary. Most of what I've seen is uh, depictions of animals in space in pop culture and cartoons and that sort of stuff. Um, the space monkey is the first thing that comes to mind. I've seen the space monkey depicted in cartoons in uh, professional wrestling. There is a pro wrestler named Space Monkey. It's just a man dressed as a monkey, dressed as a spaceman, and he's a wrestler. Um, I, I always thought that was kind of funny, but the Space Monkey is a pretty popular one. I remember as a kid seeing a children's book about a dog going into space, and I remember being told, oh, that's based on a real thing. They actually did send a dog into space, and the first thing I ask is, Oh, they brought it back, right? <laughs> right? They, 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 they brought the, they, they brought the dog back, right? <laughs> and you know, uh, the reality of the whole animals in space thing is a bit more morbid than uh, those depictions may have led on. But that that is what it is. Um, I think this should be interesting. I'm curious to what other animals got sent out into space and and which uh government did it because like there's the united states and there's uh the ussr probably going to be the big players here but it, i i i don't know did has spacex sent anything into into any animals into space yet uh, i don't know so let's get it started <laughs> Hey kids, animal test subjects have always been an important facet of science, since they allow us to study physiology in more destructive ways than we can oh, get geez. away with on humans. So it should come as no surprise that... I've seen those now. I know what those are. If I watched this video in the wrong order, I wouldn't understand those those references. Like, I, I've happened to see those two videos that he's referencing there, and my god, that was a Tarare thing. Oh, that, that's, that's still weird. That still gives me the, the heebie-jeebies. Over the years, there's been a lot of creatures haphazardly thrown at the cosmos against their will. Here's a bunch of smelly animals that achieved more in their short lives than you ever will. Quick disclaimer, this is by no means a comprehensive list, not even close. We'd be here all day if it was. More so just a highlight reel of the ones I found the most interesting. So the Great Zoo in the Sky was first founded in 1947 when the U.S. launched a craft containing a bunch of fruit flies 68 miles into the air in order to see... Mm -hmm. What kind of horrible mutants would get made from all the cosmic radiation up there. Unfortunately, they were totally fine, so the Earth was like, hey, living things can go into space and not die instantly. Supple. And the next year, they decided to... So we get to the monkey, but the monkey was not the first. The fruit flies were... I, I guess that makes sense. There's less consequence to sending uh, fruit flies into space. Honestly, I would assume they would send... Uh, something else with it. it like I, I'd imagine each uh, takeoff is very expensive in itself and just to do that to test it out on fruit flies that that feels like there's there's definitely more to that case that's not going to be like the only thing that they would be testing there that would just be kind of an incidental test that they do on the side right because that 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 doesn't feel right if that was like one of their main goals to send up a rhesus macaque named Albert, which it seems kind of like jumping the gun to go from barely alive specks to basically a person. That's not how step. I've heard if it, it pronounced. Me, I would have thrown like a frog or a gerbil in between there, but whatever, I'm no cosmopolitan. Anyway, Albert died of suffocation on the way up and never really made it to space alive. Fun fact, this rocket was actually a V-2 missile stolen from the Germans after World War II. So just in case any of oh, you shit. have any sympathy for those Nazi characters, they're technically responsible for the death of a poor innocent space monkey. Pretty condemning if you ask me. But I guess the U.S. felt pretty bad about it, so they decided to yeah, that, that's what you by need. naming the next monkey Albert that's what you need to Pretty unhealthy one. coping mechanism, according to my shrink, but she also thinks punk is dead, so what does she know? This Albert actually made it into space alive through a grand effort incorporating all the incredible cutting-edge technology that the Atomic Era had to offer. And after all that... They goofed on the parachute, so Albert oh. II turned into a fine red mist on impact, which just goes to prove the... Albert too. Jeez, this is like, it's like in the uh, the uh, the the frontiers. You, you lose a child and you replace it 
with another child by the same name. It it didn't always happen, but sometimes it did. And it's freaking weird. Uh, I feel like I'd look at that child with some sort of unearned resentment for bearing the name that I dared to give them based on the child that never got to be. And every time they mess up, I'll be like, well, uh, Albert One wouldn't have done that. That's, that's what my brain will be saying. <laughs> That's, that's kind of horrible. Age old adage, you can lead a monkey to space, but you can't make him land. There were a few more Alberts after this. Albert 3 fucking exploded. Oh. Albert 4 made it up, but he had another tissue paper parachute what don't work for heck, so he's out. Albert 5, yet again, bad shoot, liquefied on impact, until finally, in 1951, on Albert number 6, they figured out how to make a big blanket that consistently makes you not immediately die when you fall from the sky. And the monkey was recovered alive from the oh, capsule cool. alongside his 11 mouse roommates. Of course, he died two hours later, but hey, still counts. Earlier that same year, that that's pretty good. I, actually, I was under the impression that uh, that none of the monkeys got back. So that's actually uh, refreshing. After all those morbid descriptions of like explosions and and death by various means, that's actually really nice to know that a monkey made it back for a minute. <laughs> it it did it didn't take very long for things to go wrong, but like I that that does alter my uh, the the knowledge that I thought I had. <laughs> Russia launched two little pupniks named Tsigan and Dizik, both of whom came back unharmed. These two were the first vertebrates to ever leave Earth and come back alive. Then in 57, oh, yeah. the Reds snagged another achievement by putting the first living thing. So maybe they, oh, maybe, maybe my teacher, uh, was, I, I feel like I, I remember a teacher telling me that the, the dogs died, but also there, there were probably other dogs. I, I, I would assume there are other dogs that, that did die. So I'm I'm not going to assume that my teacher was lying to me or anything like that or that they were ignorant on the subject. Uh, I, I'd imagine for any example of them surviving, there's probably an example of uh, the same being not making it. Into orbit. Besides the bacteria clinging to Sputnik 1, but they're losers. We don't talk about them. Specifically, they launched one brave and daring dog from the streets of Moscow. Probably the most famous animal. Oh, this is the one. Space. You know its name well. That dog is, of course, Airbud. Unlike those other guys oh. we talked about, Laika was never planned to be Laika, covered yeah. in tax since we barely knew how to put something into orbit by this time, let alone bring it back. But they still wanted to make sure she stayed alive long enough to at least reach space. So, okay, I knew that I knew the, I know the name Laika. That's definitely the dog from the children's book, the, the, the book made for children that I read when I was a kid. But before the mission, they put her through the most rigorous canine space camp that Russia had to offer, throwing her in a centrifuge for a while to get her used to G-force, making her cage progressively smaller to get her used to cramped spaces, which made her just not shit anymore at all, but that's a different story. They also switched her diet to a special high nutrition gel that she would have eaten after takeoff, you know, had her brain not crapped out from overheating within the first few hours. In 59, the US strapped two monkeys to the nose cone of a Jupiter missile and actually got them back alive afterwards, which is crazy mostly really? because these things withstood 38 G's of acceleration. For context, that's the force that makes even trained pilots lose consciousness times 4, or this thing times 12, or roughly the same force experience when you realize that's not a normal speed bump, but one of those evil tiny ones that ruin your life, you know the ones. Well that's what you get for doing 25 near a hospital, Sam. Well hey, good thing I'm already here considering the ballistics test that just went down between the roof of my car and my frickin' skull. Jesus. So in 61, we graduated from monkeys to great apes, sending up a chimpanzee named Ham. Remember Space Chimps? Yeah, it was that. Frame for frame. Andy's <laughs> and all. What's special about Ham is that he was actually trained to pull levers and slap buttons while up in the ship, being rewarded banana pellets for completing tasks and getting his feet tased whenever he messed up. Sounds like oh. a cartoon, I know, but I promise it's for real. Meanwhile, the Soviet sounds real. Was putting a big sounds bald like smart ape into orbit, no big deal. France saw the US and Russia sending up monkeys and dogs and felt left out, so in 63, they launched a cat into space and were like, yeah, that's cool and unique. I'm one of the popular kids now. In 68, the Soviet saw the rabbit make and nobody else seems to talk about france having uh any like space ambition or anything like that it's definitely not one of the things that france is 
best known for. I, I I guess during a lot of this time, a lot of the countries that historically we would have paid so much attention to uh, faded into the background in a unprecedented level. It, it's kind of crazy. Like, uh, France and uh, Great Britain are just, like, the bosses for a while, and then they both kind of, like... They're still very important. They're still very important, but like on the grandest scheme of things, like where where a lot of the actions happen, and this is like some of the first time in a really long time where they're not uh, at the forefront of like the most important uh, international rivalry that's going on in the world, which is kind of insane making rice cakes on the moon and said, hmm, how about a tortoise for that hair? Launching two of them into deep space, all the way around the moon and back to Earth, where they were recovered alive after their capsule landed in the ocean. Kind of cheating when you are your own crash suit, but an impressive feat regardless. In 73, we put Not mummy chogs in space. What's a mummy chog? It's one of these things. Like a fish, but real rough and tumble. Tolerates low oxygen, weird pressure, high salinity, dishwasher safe, energy star rated, you name it, sister. At first, they could only swim in circles, but after a couple weeks, they actually adapted to zero G and figured out how to maneuver properly. Even more interesting, we also brought mummy chog eggs. And when these hatched, the little mummy choglets knew how to swim in zero G immediately. Kind of spooky, honestly. That same mission also sent up some spiders who managed to spin some webs. Trash webs, mind you, but hey, they managed. In 78, the Muppet Show yeah, aired Pigs weird. in Space for the first time. In 85, we cut off the arms of a bunch of newts and sent them up to see if they grow back the same way. The reasoning behind this being, if a newt can't grow stuff back, then an astronaut with a paper cut probably can't. Either. Fortunately, they rearmed themselves at the normal rate, so all is good on that front. Around the same time, NASA actually had talks with Sesame Street about sending Big Bird up on the space shuttle as a publicity stunt. This is real. That sounds the plan terrible. ultimately fell through after they realized Big Bird is fucking giant and unwieldy at all times, literally the worst possible choice for a celebrity cameo on a space shuttle. So instead, they sent a school teacher in his place. And then the Challenger fucking exploded. Let me reiterate. There is a timeline not too far from this one where Big Bird is a casualty in the single worst astronautical disaster in history. A tiny evil. I was just thinking about that, like, what if it went wrong? And I didn't realize we were already at the Challenger at this point. I, I lost track of what what the date was at this stage. Jesus, that's that's pretty horrific. I'm Honestly, if it was like. It is it just like the Big Bird suit, I assume. Like not not like the actual person who portrays Big Bird going up in space. If it is, that's even more tragic, but that the thought of somebody like evil part of me almost wishes that happened like that's just so indescribably absurd in the early 90s we set up some baby jellyfish kind of feel to grow up in that. space just for laughs they figured out how to maneuver just fine but when we brought them back down they literally didn't have a concept of gravity and couldn't orient themselves properly in their new environment which being a jellyfish is the easiest thing there is you just kind of exist maybe squirm a little now and then so when you manage to somehow mess that up you know things have gone seriously wrong in 2003 the u.s sent up a bunch of invertebrates including silkworms spiders carpenter bees and harvester ants whoops they exploded and as oh. some tardigrades went up totally exposed to the vacuum of space for 10 days which surprise surprise they were fine on that same mission a cockroach gave birth creating the first organism that we know of to ever have been conceived outside of earth and finally we'll in 2018 elon musk sent a big basket of mice to the international space station just, you know, because he can. So those are just a handful of God's creatures does. who got to experience the majesty of not knowing up from down. If you're like me, you're probably a little jealous. Why does an ugly ape get to go into space, but I don't? I wish to bear witness to the music of the spheres firsthand in a way that a lower creature... It's probably overrated, I assure you. Know you know why you feel like that? Because you're a nerd. And what better way to fill that space-shaped space in your shriveled nerd heart than a Skillshare? collection of high-quality documentaries? Skillshare? That's why you need to try oh, Curiosity, okay. Curiosity Stream. Curiosity Stream, Curiosity yeah. Stream I, was founded by the dude I behind the Discovery Channel. And it's an absolute treasure trove if you're someone like me who feeds off useless knowledge like a loach sucking algae off a fish tank. And with over 2,400 <laughs> titles, a lot of which are Curiosity Stream exclusives, it'd be hard I not to find something boy. that interests you. I personally recommend Deep Ocean, The Lost World 
world of the Pacific. There's some freaky things down there, like basically aliens. The whole thing is just one massive trip. You can get unlimited access to their full library for just $2.99 a month. I know it's a cliche, but that's literally less than a cup of Starbucks coffee a month. Also, you can get your first 30 days completely free if you sign up at curiositystream.com slash salmonella. Might be worth it. Promo code salmonella during the sign up process. Anyway, that's all for today. Till next time, I'm Salmonella, and I still don't know what Ligma is. <laughs> the, the, these uh, these ads always uh, almost legitimately end up getting me almost every time until I realize that I'm poor um, <laughs> and, and that I probably shouldn't get another subscription service, but that one's really cheap. Uh, either way, like uh, this one... Uh, it convinced me that I was wrong about something that I was actually right about and then told me I was right about it. We got lots of fun stuff there. Um, a lot of weird things that I would not expect them to do. I, I don't know if there is like a practical end game to a lot of these things that I am missing because there's a... I don't know. Uh, this one was weird. This one was really weird. It was it was just kind of a list of things, and it, it was a fun list, but it, it, was, it was odd. Um, I enjoyed it, though, and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this along with me as well. Um, I think we're done here. Uh, if you have any other Salmonella videos that I haven't done yet uh, that you think I should check out, pop them in the comment section below. Maybe I'll check them out. And uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow with another video. All right.